Hello everybody and welcome. Today I want to talk to you about three things concerning Kerbal Space Program 2. Two of which are good and one of which is bad. This is why the video is titled Two Steps Forwards, One Step Back or something in that regard. I'm not sure yet. If you follow the news around our favorite space games sequel, you might have noticed that about a week ago there was a hotfix release for KSP2, which increased the version number to 0.1.4.1. In this hotfix, they tackled two problems, which have plagued the community quite a bit. One is that the game writes values inside the Windows registry and bloats it by doing so and causes all kinds of uh, stupid issues. And the other one was a fix for the orbital decay bug that has plagued the community since the game has been released. So, quick reminder, what is the orbital decay bug? Well, basically you put a vehicle around a planet or a moon and if you just keep it there, it doesn't remain there. Instead, the orbit decays and apoapps and periaps will change and in the end the vehicle will crash onto the surface, which is, of course, undesirable. And as you can see here, this is what I tested out a while back when the previous release uh, 0140 came out. We now have a much better situation. I'm using basically the same vehicle I used for the previous flight. I'm doing the same mission. I'm going to the moon. I'm going to uh, go to a close orbit around the moon. And as you can see here, it stays rock solid. So that's a big improvement. They do write that there is still a known issue with orbital decay that uh, when you're disabling engine thrust in the low gravity sphere of influence, it can still cause some minuscule orbital decay, but they are already working on that. But the main takeaway is that it appears that the really harsh decay that was present in the game up until now is gone. So that's a relief. And the second thing, of course, is the Windows registry being written into by useless values. There were some voices in the community that kind of asked, how could this happen? How didn't they catch that? But in my opinion, uh, errors like this, like this Windows registry bug, this is something that can happen in early access games, as KSP2 still is, unfortunately. And I don't really fault the developers for not catching that immediately. I am pretty sure if they have good QA processes in place now, that they have written some type of tests to prevent this in the future. I hope you do, guys. As I said, this is something that can happen. They reacted fairly quickly compared to other bugs that are still present. And the fix is now available. So hopefully this makes the game a little bit more playable for everyone involved. But as I said, there is a flip side, and that is Wobbly Rockets. Before we go into this, I would like to ask you, if you not have yet subscribed to this channel, please do so, because we're going to get more information about KSP2 in the next couple of weeks, and you should watch this channel and stay subscribed to get all the relevant info about that. So, Wobbly Rockets. There was this dev chat that they also published a week ago, where creative director Nate Simpson talked to one of the senior engineers, David Trigonic, also known as Trigger or Trigger AU, one of the, well, old school KSP1 modders. He made, for instance, Kerbal Alarm Clock and Transfer Window Planner, two of my all time favorite mods for the game. He knows his way around Kerbal Space Program because he also was part of the development team for KSP1 up until he was transitioned to the KSP2 team. So he knows his stuff, or he should know his stuff. They talk about the challenges of how to deal with the wobbly rocket phenomenon that has plagued Kerbal Space Program players. Well, basically since the original game exists. This is not a new thing that was invented with KSP2, but in KSP2 it's kind of worse. Well, a lot worse, basically. I mean, look at this. This is a rocket that is basically a straight stack. If you remember the Starship first test flight, the full stack first test flight, it's a hundred meter plus metal tower that tumbled around like a cartwheel and it still didn't flex, didn't bend and of course did not wobble. 
And this is also something that uh, creative director Nate Simpson says in this dev chat that, in his opinion, vehicles that are constructed like, like this should not flex in such a way. He also said, and I'm not sure I 100% agree with him, that if there is radial attachment, that there should be some kind of flex. But then again, I point you to the Proton rocket, which basically has radially attached engine segments to its 4 meter diameter tank. And those are very rigid indeed, so I would not expect if I put a tank radially attached by a surface attachment to a central tank that it would wobble around like crazy. That would not be good. So they go back and forth and they talk about different potential solutions and at the end the viewer is kind of left with a lot of question marks because we don't really get a solution or at least not really a definitive approach to what they are going to do about it. Instead, as I said, a lot of questions. Even they, they ask the question about, okay, what really is Wobble? I'll do you one better. Why is Wobble? Also, when you compare it to the previous dev chat where they talked about re-entry heating, we got to see a lot of examples how re-entry heating is going to look. We uh, saw different colors that could happen depending on atmosphere composition, etc. There was some stuff we could visually comprehend when they talk about it. This was just a Zoom call recorded with no B-roll, no example footage of, for instance, a rocket wobbling or uh, how Autostrut works in Korea space program one because they talked about that as well i know there are some kind of uh, debug visuals in ksp2 because i encountered a bug where those were visible when they shouldn't and those could have been used to demonstrate which type of nodes cause which kind of wobble etc so the viewer would better understand what's going on so yeah, it was at times a bit hard to follow i mean it was an interesting dev chat it was interesting to learn about their thought process and what they want to do but in the end there is not much actionable information that we can go on so there's not much we can expect in regards to a solution for this problem instead of adding a bazillion more struts to improve our situation ourselves so yeah, this is for me the letdown and this is also something I'm going to let Nate Simpson know once I meet him, which I will, on October 21st at the Space Creator Day. Yes, I'm going to be at the Technik Museum Speyer in Germany with a lot of other creators like Everyday Astronaut and Matt Laun and many, many, many others that you are probably also familiar with because you are a space nerd and you like to watch space things, I would presume. If not, maybe give those other creators a try as well. They're all very cool and I'm looking forward to meeting them. But I also will get an interview slot with Nate Simpson and I'm going to grill him with some questions. If you have specific questions that I should ask Nate, please put them in the comments down below or go over on my Discord server and we can talk about it there. Just please keep it civil. I'm not going to go there and say you are a fraud and a pay chill and whatever. I know you guys are out there. I know you guys like to vent in the comments and that's fine. But that's not going to give us some satisfying answers or some additional information that we can work on. Think about questions where the probability is a bit higher to get some actual information out of Nate Simpson instead of just some random insults. Yes, I know the internet is there for insulting everyone and be right about everything, but we won't be in the internet, we are going to be face to face and I'm not going to try to get into a boxing match or something with the creative director of Kerbal Space Program 2. As entertaining as that might be for you. Anyway, that's my take on what has been happening with Kerbal Space Program 2 lately in regards to the hotfix that was released, as well as the information or lack thereof regarding a fix for wobbly rockets that might come down the line someday. 
If you enjoy what I do and maybe already are a long time subscriber, maybe also consider becoming a member of this channel where there are some fun perks you can play around with or go over to my Patreon site and support me there because I have to pay for the visit to Speyer out of my own pocket and while I am not a poor person, it is still an expense that I have to cover. Regardless of that, I am looking very much forward to being there and uh, chatting with Matt and Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, and everyone else as long as time permits and also to gaze at the Buran that is exhibited there. That's going to be awesome and I'm maybe going to do a video about that. I'm not sure yet but hey if this is something you like drop a comment and let me know. If enough people say that's a video they want to see then I will be happy to oblige. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye.